The neighborhood in which you live is riddled with historical secrets. Did you know that at the turn of the century, children as young as five and six worked in appalling conditions just to make enough money to eat? In this video, we are going to take a look at some sources on child labor and ask evaluative questions. We will show you how to assess the validity of primary sources. By the end, you will better understand the history of the child labor social movement and its relation to where you live. This video may supplement a packet you receive in class. In the late 19th century, the social divide between the rich and poor was bigger than ever. Children continued to be exploited despite the enactment of the Factory Act of 1886, which established a minimum age of 13 to work and a maximum work week of 60 hours. This act brought the subject of child labor into the public eye, but how effective was it? The 1890 census reported more than 1 million children between the ages of 10 and 14 working outside the home. 20 years later, the 1910 census indicates almost 2 million children working, often more than 16 tedious hours a day. It was frequently the children selling newspapers, referred to as newsies, who were the most visible. Newsies would buy newspapers by the bundle and resell them on the street. During the same time period, newspaper circulation was peaking. The turn of the century was a time that was rife with yellow journalism, the practice of exaggerating stories to boost newspaper sales, often through sensationalist headlines. You may be familiar with them as clickbait articles. In 1899, the Newsies went on strike against two of the largest newspaper outlets, the New York Tribune and New York World. These newspaper companies decided to gouge the child workers for more money, but their plan backfired when the children took to the streets to fight back. When other papers covered the strike, they reported with a spin to the story, framing the situation to reflect their own views. Oftentimes, articles and images are presented with underlying motives in mind. It is important as researchers to be aware of the rhetoric and bias in informational resources. By paying attention to some of the hidden details and sources, we are able to effectively and accurately analyze these resources. This practice extends beyond newspapers and can be seen in the following images by Lewis Wicks Hine. As you are looking at these images, here are some things to consider for evaluating your, our resources. Consider the context and background information. What do you see and what don't you see? Are there any lasting impressions? What do you think the author's intentions were? What did these images say? These two images emphasize different views on child labor at the time. In the first one, the children had actually temporarily paused their work for the day, and Hein had them go to the neighbors for materials and pose for this picture. Emphasizing the arduous working conditions. In the second image, when Hein went to take the picture, the bowling alley boss distorted the image by pulling three of the smaller child laborers out of the shot. You can see that standing in the center, the employee has a mustache and looks older. Here the boss meant to present the working conditions as more innocent and benign, when in reality they were not. Look at the images on the screen again. Do you see them differently now that you have more information? Was it ethical to dramatize the situation, even if it was for a good cause? Let's apply the same evaluation techniques to current events. Take a look at these two headlines. What context clues do you see? Could this change the article's meaning? And in what way? Despite similar headlines, one article is from 1944 and demands a minimum pay of 65 cents per hour. The other, from 1995, laments sweatshop workers earning only 65 cents an hour. This demonstrates the importance of context clues. The attempts to end child labor are an example of a social movement with opposing sides twisting information. Using your social action plan as a guide and some of the techniques for analyzing research that we introduced today, think of an issue you're passionate about. Consider social movements that have shaped our world today, particularly that took place in Brooklyn. How would you research and present these issues? How would you frame your information? What would you include and what would you leave out? Keep these thoughts in mind when conducting your own research.